Welcome to Savage Kitchen. Today we're going to be making a really fun fall appetizer. We're going to be making a baked brie shaped like a pumpkin. Now I was inspired to do this by uh, Babs on Instagram. There's an account brunch with Babs. It's fantastic. I adore her. Go follow. She's wonderful. Um, and she did this using pumpkin butter and brie. I personally am a little over the pumpkin thing. So we're going to be doing ours with some homemade apple butter. I'm real excited about it. And by the way, I have not tried this before. I'm, <laughs> we're in it together. So if this sucks, it's probably because I didn't try it first, but I think it's gonna be easy and great. So you're going to need a wheel of brie, some puff pastry. Uh, I have here some thyme and some sage and some cinnamon sticks for garnish. We'll get to that. Uh, this is just an egg with a little bit of tap water whipped up, we're gonna use that to brush our puff pastry and our homemade apple butter. Now you can buy apple butter in the store. You can also make your own. It is like one of the easiest things in the world to do and I'm gonna tell you how to make it. Uh, and by the way, if there's a certain part of this video that you wanna to jump to, there are chapters in the description, so jump around, have fun. First thing you're gonna need is a metric fuck ton of apples. I know that seems like a lot, but it boils down into very, very little bit. Helps if you have a best friend with a lot of apples. Two, baking spices. I used cinnamon and nutmeg. You could use clove, allspice, whatever you want. Three, bourbon. You don't need to put bourbon in this, but it's me. I put bourbon in most things and I kind of love what it did here. So highly recommend adding some bourbon. Four, sugar. I used maple syrup instead of refined sugar. You could do brown sugar. You could do a keto sugar. Um, I just did half a cup of maple syrup for that entire pot of apples. Oh, apple cider vinegar. That's the other thing. I added mm, probably a little too much apple cider vinegar for most people, but I like my apple butter to be a little bit on the tart side and I had very sweet apples. So I would add a tablespoon or two of apple cider vinegar. Then you're gonna cook all of those pieces down for about 20 minutes until the apples are really, really soft and then you're gonna hit it with an immersion blender. I let the apples cool down a little bit before I hit it with the immersion blender. I don't know why, I don't know if there's science behind that or not. I just don't like to throw an immersion blender into really, really hot things. After it's nice and smooth, let that sit on the stove on a simmer, uncovered for four or five hours. Stir occasionally, then at the very end, I hit it with the immersion blender again to get it really, really, really smooth. Now, as this cools, it will thicken but it should be a thick consistency, not like applesauce. It shouldn't be runny at all. Not quite as hard as butter. It's like kind of in the middle. Homemade apple butter. Let me know if you make it. All right, let's get into making our brie look like a pumpkin. So I'm assuming Babs used store made puff pastry. I'm a terrible baker. So we're gonna go with store made. Um, I might've let this thaw a little too much. It's still cool to the touch. We'll see. Oh, you know what? Also, maybe let's flour our board first. This is just to help the puff pastry not stick when we're trying to maneuver around. All right, let's see how this works. I genuinely, I've never used puff pastry before. I don't know how this works. Is that, I guess that's one. Okay. Ah, aha. All right, I see you. Okay lovely it also is very heavily floured we're just going to flatten this out so far so good and now we are going to take our brie one of my favorite things and by the way i already softened this i took this out of the fridge i don't know about 30 minutes ago um and when serving cheeses to guests when you're doing a charcuterie board that is one of my favorite tips. Make sure you bring your cheese up to room temperature before you serve it. I like to cut while they're cold, serve while they're at room temperature. Babs recommends rounding out the, the sharp corners here. So let's do that. I probably could have picked a smaller knife, but whatever. I already screwed up. In Bab's video, she puts the uh, the pumpkin butter down first. <laughs> so let's do that. Let's put our apple butter down first. Like if anything, this is very real. This is what happens when I'm cooking for guests. Like you just kind of roll with it, go with the flow. Mm. 
Ooh, okay, so that was probably like two tablespoons worth. Let's do another two tablespoons worth. I want kind of a thick layer because I really want the end product to have lots of that uh, tartness because the brie is so creamy and silky. I think it's gonna be a really nice contrast in flavors. All right, that looks lovely. <laughs> okay, we're gonna place our brie on top. Aren't you cute? And then fold this over. Now, I want to make sure that there's no cheese showing. You know what? Let's take a little of this and like even this out. So I want it to be the same thickness everywhere. Also, hold on. You come up here. All right, I want to love this. I don't want this to be annoying. Okay, make sure this is all sealed up tight because our next step is going to be putting our twine around this and tying everything. Now, I think the way, let's see. Okay, this is how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna lay my twine out first and then we're gonna tie it all up. So let's cut six pieces of kitchen twine of equal length and I wanna make sure that the twine is gonna um, wrap around the entire wheel of cheese. Okay. These scissors suck. All right. Seriously, I could probably gnaw this faster. Oh my God, give me a knife. So there's a hack for you. If your scissors suck, just use a really sharp knife. Okay, so let's lay these out. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. To me it does. <laughs> Trying to work on letting go of precision. So now, let's place our brie and tie these. I might have gone a little short. I want to tie this tight enough that makes a little bit of an indentation on the cheese. This is where an extra set of hands would also be really helpful. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, maybe don't pull too tight. <laughs> Again, if somebody has a better way of single-handedly tying a knot, please let me know. I feel like the answer to this problem is have somebody here to help you. Man, I really fucked this up. I thought it was such a good idea to lay out my strings first, and then it would be super easy to tie it, which it would have if I didn't spin the thing around. <sighs> You know, sometimes I have really good ideas that go very poorly. Motherfucker. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Last one. Do we even, yeah, you do need. Oh, this better be adorable when it's done. I'm just not the crafty type. Like I like things that are beautifully designed and look great when they're done. But fuck me, you're never going to find me on Etsy. How do we feel about this? Okay, let's do our egg wash. And this is just going to help the puff pastry get a nice golden brown. Okay, into the oven we go, 375. Babs says 30 to 35 minutes. So we're going to set a timer, let that do its thing. And in the meantime... I think we're gonna put together a little charcuterie board that we're gonna end up placing this on. I usually like to start with placing the cheeses, and in this case, I'm gonna use the brie container as a placeholder for where our pumpkin is gonna live. So I've got this awesome Irish blue cheese, really delicious, and then this bourbon-soaked Belvitano, amazing. And then I wanna start reinforcing some of those fall flavors for our fall cocktail party. So I'm gonna slice up some apples, and then after this, the meats. 
Salami roses are super easy. Just fold your salami slices over the rim of a glass, invert it, and voila, you have a salami rose. You can try it a couple of different ways. There's really no wrong thing to do here, and this is a perfect excuse to play with your food. Now we're gonna add in some candied pecans, some blackberries, and then saucy things. I love saucy things. So I'm actually using some honey that my friends Anderson and Callie gave me from their own bees. Amazing. And then we're gonna use some of the apple butter that we put in the pumpkin because I think that's gonna go great with some of these cheeses and then pepper jelly. Don't forget to put out some spoons, make things easy for your guests. Apparently, with my string debacle, I went in too tight. We have a bunch of cheese that's leaked out. Very sad. I think it's still gonna taste delicious, it's just not quite as inflated as it would be. And also, it's gonna make getting it onto this charcuterie board a little bit messy. How are we gonna do this? Hmm. All right, well, first things first, let's cut the string off with those terrible scissors. All right, need a knife. Can I flip this? So I feel like maybe leaving the string side up when baking, that probably would have been a better idea. Again, sometimes I have what I think are great ideas. Mm, they're terrible. That is just really, really embedded in there. Ugh. I've managed to mangle the cheese. It's okay, it's gonna be fine. I left a little space here for where our cheese is gonna go. So I'm gonna place the cheese first and then we'll do the garnish on it. I'm just really fucking this up. Ah! Okay, messy, but that is adorable. Shit. All right, let's, let's garnish this, shall we? Um, what I saw Babs do was very cute. She took a little, um, I don't know, like cheesy stick and stuck it in the middle with some sage leaves. I'm gonna actually use a cinnamon stick. Let's just break this in half and put that in. There we go. And then I do have sage leaves. Oh, that is kind of pretty. I was thinking about using uh, thyme because it's more like a pumpkin vine, but the sage is very, very pretty. Can we do both? Is both overkill? <laughs> Why do one when you can do both? All right, that's so cute. I do like the vine idea. Come on, lay down. Okay, it's a pain in the ass, but it's adorable. You know what, we'll use the rest of this to just sort of tuck around some of our other spots. Okay, I have to admit, it's pretty <laughs> adorable. Like. And the cheese oozing out of it, I don't mind it. It's very much uh, the indicator of what is inside and it's enticing, it smells good. I'm a fan so far. Uh, but we're gonna pause for a second so I can photograph this bad boy and then we're gonna taste this. Okay, moment of truth. After all the messiness and getting it transferred, let's give it a taste. Cut into it. I mean, the strings gave us nice little guides of where to cut. Let's see. Ooh, yeah, you can see the apple butter on there. Mmm, oh my God. <laughs> mm. You know, I was gonna invite people over to enjoy this with me, obviously, um, but damn, <laughs> I don't wanna keep it for myself. Shit, this is really good. Mmm, I mean, it's baked brie. It's kind of hard to go wrong with baked brie. This is nothing new. But I do love adding the fun fall element by making it look like a pumpkin. Oh my God. I can't stop eating this. <laughs> and I have to say the apple butter, really nice compliment to the brie. 
My apple butter is pretty tangy, it has a lot of acidity to it, and it pairs really, really niceness with the creaminess and roundness of that brie. All right, I have to say, I would recommend this. It was, aside from my messiness and those few little mishaps, it really wasn't a ton of effort, and I do think the reward is pretty high. It's, it's cute, I think your guests will enjoy this. It's a way to make your charcuterie board a little bit seasonal. It tastes delicious. And uh, I will definitely do this again. So if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Welcome. Uh, if you have any things you'd like to see me try, let me know. I love hearing your ideas. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers, friends.